welcome to the panel about how to expand your brand outside of art studios. Um, <laughs> and with, with your boy, James. And DJ. Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, one thing that I want to say up top is that we're not telling you to, like, no. leave art. Yeah. You know, this is still going to be a very art-focused and art-centric panel. You yeah. know, we're not, we're not going to tell you to stop drawing and make a gaming channel. I mean, you could do that. I did but, that. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I guess, more about how you can take your art and how you can use it within, in other avenues to create more, more publicity, more, more content. revenue, more yeah. content. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're just, we all like to draw here, so let's, let's just have some fun with it. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess first. Oh, yeah, uh, that's me. Let's introduce ourselves. So Ooh. hi, I'm DJ. Uh, you can see my workflow. This is where I started. I started off uh, working for studios. I worked for Cartoon Network and Lucas and name a studio. And then I moved into tech uh, where I worked at Instagram, uh, building, helping build the AR department and then also Twitter when it was named Twitter. Um, and now <laughs> I work not at YouTube, but I do have a YouTube channel. And I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hello, it's me, your boy, James. Uh, I have a different, I guess, journey with my art career. No. Um, I started out as a sandwiched artist, which is, that's like what they call. Uh, and then I went not into the industry and went yeah. just right to YouTube itself. Good uh, call. <laughs> started just making YouTube videos and uh, posting them online and uh, people liked them. Uh, then I started to expand the brand to other, uh, I guess, merchandise with like books and games and plushies. Um, and then I found my way into the industry, uh, making, a, making a Netflix show uh, and getting to see you know, the, the, the animation industry side of things compared to the YouTube animation side of things, which is a, a lot different and I a learned a lot. Yeah. Um, and yet now I'm just keeping on making content myself. <laughs> yeah, we, we did the opposite. I started off in the industry and went to YouTube. He went from YouTube to the industry. Yeah, and so now with both of our knowledge combined, we we'll bring you, you out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring you this panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, hey, Lightbox 2023, can, can, can we ask you a thought-provoking question? What's the final form of content creation? What is this all for? What, what are we doing this for? No, close. The answer is influencer boxing. That is the final form of content creation. This that is, is the goal. Do <laughs> Don't you want to be here? Do you have you, what it takes? You have what it takes. <laughs> by, by the way, when, this, when I saw this picture, um, my first thought was like, oh, this is a great example of squash and stretch. Yeah. It's <laughs> that, it was his birthday, too. It was my birthday, too. <laughs> that was yeah. happening on his birthday. Uh, and you know that the chess, anyway, we'll have to look at it. Ha ha ha, just kidding, just kidding, fooled you. Yeah. Um, that's not what the final form of content creation is. No. Um, but seriously, let's keep real. Yeah. How, how do you transition from being an artist to building an online audience and generating additional income? Yeah, because as we know, uh, if you guys are working in the industry, very rarely do uh, you work at a company for much longer than a few months nowadays, especially in the animation industry. Mm -hmm. So it's good to start working on your own um, projects, your own brand, maybe even working on your own YouTube channel, just to kind of like have something so you never find yourself uh, truly needing a job. Mm -hmm. It's a bad position to be in when you're like really struggling. I think you'll, you'll be able to tell from this panel that me and DJ were both biased with YouTube. Um, you know, that's uh, where we get or at least now it's where we get the majority of our income yeah. uh, is yeah. YouTube. Uh, there's other, of course, we're going to talk about other platforms, but I feel like YouTube is the, uh, the one that like pays the most. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, YouTube is the one that has the most uh, people making over six figures um, mm -hmm. as a platform. So let's, uh, let, me, let, me, let me hit you with this. All right, this is something that we're not going to be able to answer. It's something that you're going to have to look deep down inside yourself as artists, and it is what interests you creatively? What, what, do you, what do you get out of art, you know? Um, every artist, I believe, expresses themselves differently, and there's something that draws, haha, all of us in to this thing that we like to do, yeah. um, and it's important to find out what that is. Yeah, it really helps, too, because like, if you can really figure out what, you're, what interests you about art, because we all 
have a reason we're artists. Mm -hmm. It's not just to, I mean, it might be just to draw pretty pictures, but most of us have something else that drew us in that like you animated something and you felt something or you watched something and you're like, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Find what that thing is for you because that's really important, especially when you start making content. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah, what, did, what do you get out of art? That's an important question. Hey, DJ. Yes, James? What do you get out of art? Well, um, I enjoy telling stories. Um, I like making people feel things. Whether I'm doing a static illustration, I want to make people go, wow. Or with a story, I want to make people like connect with the characters. I want to give them goosebumps. I want to make them cry. I want to make them feel something with my art. OK. James? Yeah? What do you get out of making art? Oh, good, great question, DJ. Um, so I think. Even like back when I was a little child, uh, I always liked to entertain people with my art. You know, I, I liked to just make these silly, silly little doodles. I made these little stick figure comics back in the day, and then I liked to share them out with my friends. And so I always liked to just think of a joke, draw it out, uh, set up punchline, send it off, and then see, see people's reaction and, and then see if they enjoyed it and stuff. So I always liked to entertain people with my art, um, and then I, you know, was, uh, I think that just makes sense that I like transitioned over to the internet where now I'm like sharing my art with the whole world, just being like, look, here's a funny joke world. Do you like it? And it took me- Do you a, like me? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it took me a, a little bit to like find my footing and figure out how a, yeah. a drawing tablet works. Um, but, you know, we got there. Uh, <laughs> and now I make, make these videos and entertain a whole bunch of people with my art. Um, so that's, what I get out of art is yeah. just to entertain people and tell these you know, interesting stories and jokes. Uh, but of course, there are other things that you can get out of art that we did not mention. Yeah. You know? maybe, they, maybe artists like to capture the world they see, or I included cake in here. Yeah. I think that's an art form. Yeah, anything could be a cake now. That's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, or it, could, it doesn't need to be some deep philosophical reason, it could just be like, ha I like cute animals, rawr. Um, that's <laughs> what you get out of art, and that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, that the, this part of the panel, you, you kind of have to do some deep introspective uh, thought about like what, why you draw, why do you do what you, why do you sit at your computer for hours at a time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> um, so I think, like, yeah, and I think James did a really good job of doing that on all these different platforms that he uses. Um, you, you did a really good job of that, especially with like your Twitter. Like oh. you use that to like test jokes mm -hmm. and like it's not directly art focused, but you do a lot of like one-liners on your mm -hmm. Twitter, which I think is awesome. I've, awesome. I still don't know how to use Twitter. I'm not a text person. No. There's a reason I do art. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you, you, that's, oh, that's you. really good. And I also think like it's important because like when you are doing art for a really long time, I've been in this industry for uh, I guess 15 years um, and you, you encounter burnout in a lot of things. And you get to a point sometimes where you're like, what am I doing? Why am I working for this studio? And it happens. I know that's, like, you, some of you guys are probably still figuring out how to get in the studios, or maybe you just started, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, you might get burned out. And I think it's important to, like, think about why you wanted to be an artist. Why, mm -hmm. what, what made you interested in going in that? Because uh, for me, getting out of that, like, I, I watch anime again. I, like, started getting back into the stuff that actually got me interested in art, and that helps you get out of burnout. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. It's, it's important to be like, why do you do what you do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, now that we've thought about what we get out of, out of our, your art, yeah. how are we going to incorporate that into your brand? A brand? That's you. That's the thing that you just said. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess it, it was when we were like creating this panel. It was. It felt kind of weird calling it a brand. You yeah. Know, calling yourself a brand. Yeah. Um, but what is a brand? It's James. Me. James is a brand. <laughs> you can look at so on my my Instagram. Not a person. <laughs> not a person. I'm sitting next to a brand right now. <laughs> but what we what we really boiled down into what a brand is is just hold on. What is? It's a, I don't know. I, I, we were thinking hard about what a brand was, uh, but if I had to put some thought into it, yeah. uh, a brand is just how you're perceived online and how you and your work is perceived online. Yeah. So if you post anything online, you, you have any presence online, 
whether you like it or not, that's your brand. It so is. That is something I just You're said. You're stuck yeah. with it. <laughs> just said what. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, that's anything you say or do is your brand. If you share your opinions online, that affects your brand too. Yeah. Uh, an example of this pretty recently, uh, you just saw Jack Septicai say that he didn't like the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I unsubscribed yesterday. <laughs> and like, now that opinion is now attached to your brand. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's a pretty minor, I mean, it's a pretty major opinion, yeah, major. Yeah. Um, but like any, anything you share, any thought you have, any opinion you have, that's now tied in to yeah. your brand, which I, I know it's weird to think about because you're a person with uh, all these complex emotions, but on the internet, people just see what you put out there. Yep. So, and make a split judgment mm -hmm. on who you are and everything about you. So, yeah. you know, that's kind of, anyway. <laughs> uh, so let's look at my brand versus Alan's brand. Uh, so this isn't, that doesn't look, uh, that's not. Yeah. The, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this is uh, Alan Becker. Uh, he's another good friend of ours. Yep. He does the animation versus animator videos. My yeah, my channel partner on my yes. gaming channel, yeah. Uh, he, he does all these uh, very, very amazing and high quality animations with these uh, stick figures, uh, and there's no dialogue either. Yeah, you, if you've ever seen a, a video where like the stick figures fight UI came out like 17 years ago, oh. Alan did that. It's one of the first like viral videos yeah, it was a, ever. Yeah, it was. Um, he did it when he was like 16 and alone in his room. And yeah. now he's, he's still making those, by the way. Yeah. They're really, really good. Yeah. Um, and so just comparing my brand to Alan's brand is that we, we're both telling stories, but I'm doing it through dialogue. Yeah. Uh, he's doing it through characters and acting. Yep. Uh, we both don't, I mean, there's also a lot of similarities between our brands too. We like don't show our face and we're family friendly. Um, and we both have characters that have pretty minor details, yeah. very little details. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I personally liked the FNAF movie, but I, I guess Alan didn't. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't know what Alan's opinion <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm just bringing it back. Um, and then my brand, because I am telling, I'm making videos with my voice and, and my writing is, it's personality focused. Yeah. Uh, and then Alan is more story and narrative and character focused, yep. uh, which is fine. That's just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it, and there's, there's pros and cons of both, right? Yes. Like James, like talk about some of the negatives and benefits of like, of doing that. Like. Um, yes, there's, there is pro pros and cons of being personality focused. Like, uh, you know, if you, say that you don't like the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Yeah. Now all these, all these FNAFers are dunking on you. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's the right word for it. Yeah. FNAF. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, you know, Alan, he, um, he, he, he doesn't, I don't think, does Alan get recognized a lot? I get recognized. <laughs> <laughs> you get more recognized yeah, more yeah. than Alan? Well, because I fought, I feel like it's because I fought great. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, like, for Alan, like, he, uh, like, very rarely does his audience know who, what he looks like. And that mm -hmm. is nice because, you know, he can have, uh, he could be, like, public about his relationship. Yeah. And, like, he can um, walk in public without getting mm -hmm. recognized and go to the store um, and, and not uh, have to talk to people <laughs> sometimes. So, uh, yeah, there's... Like I guess there's and the pros and cons. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I tried writing some uh, characters and narrative-driven stuff, and it was really hard. I, yeah. I've found that I, I, I can just write about just my opinions and just yeah. share them. But then, it's a different skill. Yeah. And then Alan has all these narratives and characters with personalities and stuff. So yeah. it's different skills, uh, just different ways of expressing yourself. Yep. Um, and then, uh, so you make art and you post it online. That's pretty cool. That's, that's what we all do here, right? I'm assuming. <laughs> Hopefully, So everyone. Now let's finally get into the, what we're all here for, is how to expand your brand and make some of that, that juicy content that, that we're all, yeah. all here for, right? Um, so, you know, you, we, all, we're all, we all know that art takes a really long time, and if you spend hours on a, on a piece and you post it online, Here's, here you go, Twitter, I'm sending it off into the void. Uh, you might get people looking at it for two seconds, five if you're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you take all that work that you did and you get two seconds of content. And I think we all, all here know what that feels like. You yeah. Know, it's not the best. So yeah. there's other avenues that we're here to talk about and discuss about ways you can get more content out of it. Yeah. So like, uh, why well, I actually started Animators vs. Games, our gaming channel, and it, we have a lot of art focus on there, um, is 
I would spend, yeah, like, you know, eight hours on an illustration, fully aware that as someone who worked at Instagram and could look at the analytics, be like, okay, I, I know someone only looked at this for like three seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't like that I spent two hours to for someone to experience something for such a short amount of time. Alan would spend, and you too, mm -hmm. spend like a month on a video, and then the yeah, video... Eight like, minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, eight minutes of animation, which is still insanely fast, sure. but uh, not, not much time. Yeah. So with, with animators versus games, we wanted to spend 30 minutes making content and then give people 30 minutes of content, mm -hmm. which is, I, I just wanted to kind of equal those out. Mm -hmm. And it makes, I feel like it also gives you a closer connection with your audience. Oh yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. There's, a, there's a whole, let's talk about some of the ways that you can expand your brand. Of course, not everything that we're, we mention up here is the right avenue for you. Yeah. Uh, you kind of have to, like I said, look into what you get out of art and then figure out how you can take what you get out of art and expand it. Express it, yeah, and yeah. expand and express yourself. So there's a, a you know, I guess, it's, like I said, we're both, we're both biased with YouTube channels and stuff. So yeah. create a YouTube channel. Just Start do one it. tomorrow, right <laughs> yeah. now. Do it on your phone. Yeah. But like, um, so like these people, we all, you know, you guys may have seen them. They, they don't just have an art channel. Like uh, the first thought is tutorial channel, right? Mm -hmm. But very rarely do tutorial channels do well. Like if mm -hmm. you just start posting your art, uh, your process, maybe talking over it, those don't usually have great retention. All these people have tutorial channels, but what they do is make it interesting. They're funny. They have a character. They, mm -hmm. uh, they do challenges. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they have a lot of different ways of expressing themselves creatively. And, and still being art focused too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just being able to get more out of the hard work that you do. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and uh, what else is there? There's uh, Meat Canyon's a very good example. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. he also makes animations. Um, yep. And then he has this second channel where he yeah. uh, talks about just <laughs> topics. Anything yeah. that he just wants, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so he's, I don't know, like, have you met me, Canyon? I have. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, yeah, all he's right. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like, so, like, what I'm, what I like about Meet Canyon is, like, to have an animation channel on YouTube, you guys all know, animation takes an extraordinarily long amount of time if you're doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Alan, That's your point and, to me. Well, <laughs> you did do it by yourself. That's <laughs> the, the first, yeah. Yeah, but Alan and James now have full size teams, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And that's expensive. Yeah. You, you can't just start going yeah. into animation right from the get-go because it's just too much. Mm -hmm. And what I like about Meat Cannon is he, he, he has his, his animation team where he posts once or, or twice uh, a month, but then he has this channel where he does talks about topics on his secondary channel where he posts every other day. Mm -hmm. He also streams his work, too. Uh, yes, he streams while he works and animates, um, which is a great way of also engaging with your community. Mm -hmm. Then he also has a Patreon. Yeah. So like all these different ways of supplementing his what he wants to do, which is animation. Yeah. And yeah. then he has all these other different avenues of of making more content. Yeah. Uh, so. And, that, and that's what Alan does. Like yeah. that's why we have his, he has his main channel. And then we also have animators versus games where mm -hmm. we can kind of just have goof off, invite friends on mm -hmm. other animators and have a great time. Yeah. And so like I, I, we, we've been sitting here, like I said, we're so biased with YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, but of course, there's other avenues of, of expanding your brand. Uh, there's this big rise in short form content. Yep. Uh, and it, it works so well with animation too. Yeah. Because like making a, like sitting, like just <clears throat> people are scrolling on their phone. They're just wanting to be entertained. Yeah. You know? And then seeing, a, just having a, a TikTok of a funny little animation or a YouTube short or whatever. Uh, it's, it's it's just seems so perfect, right? Yeah. Like it, you, you, you don't need to make like an eight minute long cartoon. You can just like tell your joke and go. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know. Yeah, I mean, like some of the, an the animation shorts I've seen on TikTok and stuff, they, they're literally just like playing with like the, the, the scaling tool to yeah. move their mouths. And, mm -hmm. and it's really fun. Like it, it's, it's a great way to start off when you are trying to grow uh, is short form content. Cause yeah, I, less... I guess there's a less of a focus on quality, you know, yeah. <laughs> on, on TikTok. And, and, and more of like be, being just, just entertaining. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't think that there's a lot of money in TikTok and YouTube Reels. Um, no, not for us. There's, there's a little bit on YouTube Shorts. Yes. I've burned a couple hundred on YouTube Shorts. So yeah. <laughs> we're, it, yeah. we're still... I, yeah, short form content doesn't pay as well, but it is a great way to grow quickly. Yes. Like, like it, you, it's really tough nowadays, especially with like uh, how, how crowded the space is for long form content to just kind of jump right in. 
and, and start, get a million followers, unless you're like really entertaining or like something goes well for you. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, doing short form content, you can get a million followers in, you know, a couple months if you're like diligent and you find something that works and you, you keep at it. Mm -hmm. Because for the most part, you just got to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, it's basically it's free publicity, you know, if, yeah. if you do have a YouTube channel uh, and then people are watching your YouTube shorts, yeah. then they can just be directed right to your YouTube channel. It's yeah. just uh, more ways of growing your audience slash brand uh, yeah. is just, like I said, it's really fun. Uh, there's also, like I said, not just YouTube, there's other ways of expanding your brand. Uh, we're here at Lightbox. There's yep. tabling at conventions. That's a good way. Um, there's, that was at Lightbox. That was at Lightbox. Oh, that's, yeah. look at that. Yeah. How long ago was it? Uh, two years ago. Oh, look at that. Maybe one year. Um, there's, uh, you know, if you like writing, there's graphic novels. Um, this graphic novel was actually made by uh, so the store, storyboard supervisor on my Netflix show, Oddballs. Um, and she, it's funny, she did like way more than supervise the storyboards. She was uh, uh, like with us in like all the art reviews and, and uh, she's really helped out. Her name's Sarah So, and I'm giving her a shout out basically. She's all buy her books. Uh, and then there's live streaming, um, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there's, I, I don't know, I was, I was trying to think about like how do people grow audiences on Twitch? Yeah. Because I don't think people are just going to, oh, I'm going to browse the art tab on yeah. Twitch and then sort it by lowest views to highest views and then just, I don't think people are doing that. Yeah, Twitch is, <laughs> Twitch, Twitch still uh, is figuring out how to, like, I think they're their algorithm for growth. Because yeah. as any big Twitch star will tell you, the way to grow on Twitch is off of Twitch. Yeah, yeah, they you grow your audience on TikTok or YouTube Shorts or Instagram yeah. or whatever, and, and then, then hey, I'm over. live streaming everyone, and then yeah. people come to that. Yeah. Um, but we're, we, we're, neither well, of us are streaming. Also, so. if, <laughs> if, I, like, I, yeah, I, I don't, we don't live stream, no. but I, I will say like, live streaming is good in moderation. A lot of the people we know who live stream uh, seem to have an unhealthy relationship with I would, time. I was going to like, it seems like a lot of live streamers, they just have to stream constantly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, that's again, why we're partial to YouTube is, is because with live stream, you, you, you have to be on all the time yeah. to be profitable. Um, that's why a lot of live streamers now they take like uh, chunks and have other people edit it out mm -hmm. and post it on YouTube because you could still make more money off of YouTube, even though Twitch can be your main platform. So they'll cool. figure it out. They'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, there's also other, you can do make music. Yeah. I, like, neither of us know how to do that. Um, nope. Web comics is another way of expanding your brand. Just, uh, and I think web comics also just kind of lends itself, or it, web comics and shit posting, I think are a little kind of go yeah. hand in hand. Yeah. Um, this, this shit post was actually done by one of my background artists. Yeah, didn't uh, that blow up and get it like did blow up. so much? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I think there's, Honestly, such an art to shit posting. There is. <laughs> like, there, you Special can, skill. You I can like it. make a shit post and then just like be, just keep on making shit posts on yeah. Twitter and then like just blow up from that. There's even, I don't know what it's called, but like there's like meme videos. There's like a special category on YouTube that is that too. Oh, YouTube poops? Y yeah, is that what they're called? I, I think that's, yeah, they're okay. still called that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, if basically, I always, if I thought of a joke and I just wanted to tell it immediately, uh, I would just make a little comic or make a little shit post and yeah. then just put it up and then see how, how the audience would, the general audience would react to it. Because yeah. um, in, in animation, if you think of a joke, you kind of have to wait for a really long time yeah. to tell it. Yeah. And then also you hear the joke over and over and then you don't know if it's funny anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. yeah, so there's, uh, you know, there's, like I said, we're not just saying to do YouTube. There's a whole bunch of, Different avenues. Um, In fact, you should do all as yeah. many of them as you possibly can. And I think the next one, most important, there's also NFTs <laughs> and AI art and reposting other people's work without their credit. Yeah, yeah so many cool. different things you can do. Yeah, you can do all those things. Don't take any pictures of this, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this would be so bad. If, like a picture of me going like, yeah, under this is like on the internet. Um, <laughs> um, JK about this one, by the yeah, way. Don't do any of those um, things. Uh, haha. Uh, and then. Uh, we also were saying if you want to put in the work and make a video game, yeah, yeah, that seems like another option. Yeah, I mean, that, we, we put up like 
three really, really successful mm -hmm. stories of doing that. Yes. I, we, I, I, we have a few friends who make video games and who are like deciding to do that on their own and it is a multi-year yeah. endeavor. It's like on the, it's just as hard as, it's more hard than more, animation. Yeah, because so, you have to do animation you have to do and code and, stories, and yeah. story and the background and then like UI and UX play and all this. Yeah, play test it. So yeah, why do we even mention that? I don't know, don't, don't make a video <laughs> game, just don't. Uh, yeah, like I said, but there's just, all these, whatever you get out of art, yeah. you know, just that's yeah. The, the, if you if you want to make a video game, make a video game. Yeah, yeah. You and, and like the whole process, like all the stuff we're telling you guys uh, about animation and sub figuring out different ways of making revenue around to make animation applies to video games. If you make sure that you're communicating with your audience, posting, because mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll see a lot of this, like people who are making indie games, they'll be showing their concept art, they'll be talking about uh, features in the yeah. game. Showing they'll, trailers and, yeah. and like yeah, gameplay and stuff. Yeah, have a Kickstarter, exactly. like all those things lead to the game. And yeah. that you're building, if you're building your audience while you're you're creating, you're, you're kind of building you're the Mac art Mopus, as you're, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're building it as you're going. Yeah, um, exactly, like while you're working on your animation pilot, you can be posting clips and trailers and posters. Yep. And, concept art and making maybe make kickstarters for the everything too and live stream your work so yes there's uh while you're doing the work uh there's other ways to make content yeah. of yourself doing the work and you should yeah you really should because you'll learn a lot too like just by making it uh I'm, I'm a person who likes to plan a lot before i start on something mm -hmm. and i would say 60 percent of the time or you're learning i learn more while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Like even for AVG, like we had like an animated trailer and like all this stuff and like, but when we posted, uh, we got a lot of views because Alan had a big channel, but we still sucked. Like we didn't know how to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how to like uh, keep retention up. Like sure. all those things we learned. Bad at video games. Yeah, we're bad, at, <laughs> we're not good at any of the games we play. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and we learned how to do those things while making content. Yeah, yeah, you just learn as you go. Yeah. Um, another thing, that we just wanted to mention is collaborating with other artists yes. in similar fields. Yeah. And I put up a lot of examples of me. Um, James has collaborated with so I've, many people. Yeah, that is true. I have collaborated with a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and actually, I have a, if you'll indulge me, Lightbox 2023, I have a funny story about this little comic right here. Oh, can you see my mouth? Cool. Um, there is this, this guy named Andy, um, and he, <laughs> like, he, I met him, like, I think it was yesterday. Like, he, just comes up to me and was like, hey, James, uh, I, uh, I don't know if you remember, but we did this collab back in like 2015. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, we, I did a guest comic for you. And I like remembered who he was. His, his, he's here at Lightbox, he's tabling. Oh, really? It's like Dino Tunes, Dynamite nice. Tunes. Um, I probably should have looked up how to pronounce his name before. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then like, it was so funny because then my friend, my circle of friends, they all knew who Andy was, uh, and then like, I just met Andy, and I was like, oh my god, me and Andy, we like, oh, we go all the way back to like 2015, so and then like, I showed them the comic on my phone, and yeah. then they were like, oh, Andy knew James this whole time, and stuff, so uh, I just threw this like comic from 2015 in, just because it literally was relevant yesterday, yeah. um, I, and, and you should all go look at Andy's stuff. Dow tunes. Yeah, and uh, it, Collaborating is also good because you, you know, you're, you're, it's free publicity. Yeah. You're like finding other audiences and finding other, working with other people and like making those connections. Um, and especially for animation, oh, uh, yeah. it does not require too much work. Um, you just, for me, I would, they, people would just send me a script and I would record my voice yeah. and then they would do all the work. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always liked that about meeting, when I met James is uh, he, he really fostered the YouTube community and like, it was interesting from from a person who came specifically from the industry, uh, which, which there's a lot of camaraderie, but not a lot of money. Um, but when you go and see, I saw all these young YouTubers, and I and I loved seeing how like how they had their own audiences, how they were getting paid making their own content, their own uh, IPs, and and James and Jaden and all these people who uh, were the bigger the bigger side of it were were really helpful in like fostering it. You guys yeah. do a lot of collabs. You would always jump on smaller I think, channels. And I think like, all artists like, we we're all artists, so yeah. we all know like how much work and what it takes to like just make a drawing, yeah. you know. Um, and so I think we were let all alone supportive. thousands yeah. for like an animation. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I it was everyone was super supportive and yeah. just helpful and stuff. Uh, so yeah. Collaborating also like helps you get into the industry, like the, yeah. your community and your industry and stuff. So uh, that's a, another way of expanding your brand. Um, you can't really plan for this. This yeah. next 
example. Uh, but if you have a viral moment, seize it. You yes. Know? Like, <laughs> and there's yes. not really a, a lot you can do. I do want to point out this guy on the right. DJ like was adamant about <laughs> putting him in. I don't know who that is. I don't know who he is either. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even want to say it. Like, Glizzy? Yeah. He's, <laughs> guzzles Glizzy's, dude. He's hot dogs. <laughs> What's wrong? So, like, we, I was, we were putting examples of uh, people that have had a, a viral moment, and then instead of it just being that yeah. one viral moment, yeah. they were able to turn that into some content. Yeah, I, I, I did choose him b because specifically he's having his right he's now, and he's doing a great job of capitalizing on it. He's posting a lot. He's going on a big podcast like H3H3. Mm -hmm. He's doing a lot of things that I think is good for someone who is uh, having his, his moment. Uh, all the other people like uh, James and uh, Jack. Uh, Jack. It's funny that we're and, mentioning him twice this time. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Emily. Um, yeah, they, they, they had their moment and they, and they, they, they capitalized on it. Mm -hmm. and, we, and that's important, it's very hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, but you can't really plan for that. You don't really, Oh, they're cheering for us, DJ. Uh, <laughs> through the walls. Nice. Yeah. Um, and lastly, not lastly, why I say that? I don't, uh, don't be afraid to spam. Yep. It is free publicity. Um, just all platforms. Uh, it's so funny that like uh, when I, I, I guess I'm at an age now where people will tell me that they would read my web comics back in the day. And they're like, oh, I've been reading you since your web comics. But every time people tell me that they would read them on a different platform. I've yeah. had people be like, oh, I read them on iFunny, I read them on Tumblr. And a lot of times you didn't even post them there. No, like, yeah, like, yeah. like someone else did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and like, it's so funny that like, I, I was able to like reach all these different people just yeah. from posting on different, like every platform that I could think of, you know? Yeah. Um, that, that like, you know, there's just different audiences on every different platform. So if your content works on Facebook and Instagram and yeah. YouTube, like just, send it there too. Yeah, it, it's it, weird. Like like some platforms like we the James's third most famous video <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a uh, game he played on Animators versus games yeah. called uh, Pico Park. And like this video, I don't know what dark magic it has in it, but like regardless of what platform we put on, it got like 100,000 views or 100 million views. Yeah on, on uh, yeah. shorts and then like a 20 million on TikTok. Random, random clip of us playing a video game. It doesn't make any sense. And yeah, it, I, like, I, I think my theory is that like someone was watching it and then died and then it just and, played and, on loop. And it happened a lot to a lot <laughs> yeah. of people and it's still like just playing over yeah. and over again. Cause yeah, and like Russia or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like, it, anyways. Yeah, so yeah, have but, a, it can, it, but it's weird because like when you do have something take off, Sometimes it takes off on all the platforms. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it only takes off on one platform, mm -hmm. which is weird. Uh, we've had that happen mm -hmm. a lot too. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just good to post. Exactly, yeah, Pre post, post, it's free publicity, um, you know. Yeah, uh, and also you'll learn a lot. Yeah, you, there's you different will. audiences and different yeah. communities there. Uh, you'll meet people, people will say stuff. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, like I said, don't be afraid. Don't be like, oh, I don't wanna overcrowd it. Yeah, that's because I, I, even someone who does it, like I have a team that helps, like and who posts regularly. Charles, shout out, um, and like when I when for me, like I I go like sometimes on my own Instagram months without posting, yeah. which is bad. Sure, um, but you should try and post pretty regularly. It it mm -hmm. it, it does help a lot. Oh yeah, uh, and then this is lastly. I no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> This is, I guess, this is just more of a helpful message to all the artists yeah. in the audience. And there's some creepy music playing. Yeah. <laughs> some ominous stuff. Yeah. Um, be cringe. I, be cringe. Yeah. We have to out. We have to be louder. Than be that. cringe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To be cringe is to try. Yes. Right. No matter what you do, no matter what you try, you're going to be cringe. Yes. Uh, especially when you're just starting out and you don't know any better. It's going to yep. be. It's gonna be hard to find your footing and find the right thing. And if you're not cringe somehow, just wait a few years and you'll look back and be like, oh, that was that cringe. That's cringe, exactly. Yeah. But that's okay. Yes. We're telling you it's okay to be cringe. It is. Uh, we'll, we're all figuring things out. Yeah, you need something. <laughs> that ego, whatever you need to get posting and like start, you, you need it. You need yeah. it in the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're just, that was just more of a helpful little message yeah. to, listen, we're, we're, we're all cringe here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, they, they, they they're a cringe yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, 
just to like, I guess, Ugh. dogpile on our cringe, is yeah. we just wanted to show off our first stuff. Uh, I had the video played. I don't think the audio is set up. Yeah. Um, but if you want to, the video's still up. You can. Uh, it, I don't know what it's doing, but it's uh, the first video that I ever posted. Oof. It's uh, ooh, it is hard to watch. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything about like recording or, or what year? Myself. What year was it? Oh man, I was 18 years old, so I was legally an adult, okay. which is even more embarrassing. Uh, but like. The first video was just starts with me. So you know those books you make in elementary school it, that you yeah. write? And then also, this is embarrassing. I didn't know that the video needed to be in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Oh, so it's square. I just made it a square because yeah. I was like, comics are square. So yeah, I, yeah it's, it's bad. And then I also found my, first, my very first web comic um, that I made when I was 16. Uh, like I said, didn't know what I was doing. I, I got a drawing tablet for my birthday, and I just threw it out. Um, I don't even want to read it. It's just making a joke like, Arizona, what's your favorite state? And he goes, solid, but I think being a liquid could be fun. Never mind. He said, whatever. And then <laughs> this, this comic right over here, this was the first comic that I'd made that had bubble people. So this was, I guess, the oh, debut wow. of yeah. bubble people. Um, and they've come a long way since then. Uh, but we're just, we're just showing off how here. cringe that we are. Yeah. And, uh, now it's your turn. Oh, uh, no. Um, <laughs> so I started off doing Newgrounds. Uh, it, I was like 15, so mm -hmm. also, for, forgive wait, me. Can you see the, the Ugh, photograph? I'm so glad that can't be seen. Ah. Yes. <laughs> it's like yes. Photo, this like Photoshop job of you. And yeah. So I, this was like, I, so in high school, they, they just had like a class that was like new media. Um, and we used Photoshop and, and Flash and all these programs that were just kind of coming out. And this was before like in all those cringy videos were like, I'm a monster in the mirror. Like I, I was like, oh, clone tool, let me try doing this. That's me in a ninja costume. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, it was, that is cringe. Uh, I posted that on, yeah. Inst on, on For the EBR. world to see. Yeah, and, and I got likes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. Um, but yeah, I, a lot of these things I did, especially in the beginning, like that one and the Newgrounds animation, I animated those with a mouse. Yeah. Tablets weren't a thing. <laughs> I know. I gave myself carpal tunnel in both hands. Um, and then uh, this was also drawn this, with the like, mouths. I was looking at this life drawing. That's sure. That's cringe. I mean, I, but I mean, <laughs> we, we were posting up new stuff. So that was when I finally went to art school, mm -hmm. and they make you learn how to figure draw. Even though I just want to draw anime, that's but uh, that's that's what they make you do. And then the last one is my first like single point perspective. Um, All right, that's great, DJ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that we also wanted to yep. talk about in this, this panel uh, is the importance of having your own IP. Uh, we're not saying that fan art is bad. In fact, fan art's really good. It is good. DJ's gotten, have you said you've gotten jobs from fan art? Oh, so many. Yeah. So many. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't know it was many. I thought it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So for my stuff, like I did that avatar picture like, I don't know, 12 years ago or something. Um, and I had to do that when I was at school, uh, outside of school, because digital art wasn't a thing yet. Um, so I would go home and practice concept art by aging up all the avatar characters mm -hmm. and uh, then digitally coloring it. Yeah, so and you, you learned a lot. I did, yeah. yeah fan art. Yeah, I yeah. did. And, and it also ended up giving me my first job in the industry, which was at Cartoon Network. Um, yeah. I worked on Fire Breather and Adventure Time. Wow. Um, which yeah. character did you voice? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. What did I say? Uh, but why is it important to have your own IP, DJ? Oh wait, wait, wait. wait. I do want to finish that. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. so I, I was at I was at Anime Expo, and this was like a long time ago. And Anime Expo used to have like portfolio reviews, and I I heard that they were there, and I literally at my table heard that they were there, grabbed a bunch of my prints, put them in a portfolio, and ran over there. And they looked at it like, cool. When can you start? And I was like, oh, what? And I got an internship <laughs> right then. Um, mm. It was crazy, and and, uh, and it was from fan art. It was literally from fan art, yeah. And it w I know now, like we all know, like fan art is definitely a way to get your work seen. It's definitely a way to build an audience. Um, at the time, my teachers were like, "Don't draw fan art. Don't draw anime. Those things don't. Ha those won't get you a job." Mm -hmm. I would, had to just do it. Like they were, they were literally adamantly against yeah. drawing that. Yeah. But, but look at you now. Yeah, but <laughs> and then also it's like. Nowadays, too, it's like, you know, like when you're setting up your portfolio, if you're going to work on SpongeBob, you better have some stuff that looks like SpongeBob in your portfolio because 
yeah, we, we'll, we'll yeah. just apply with like high quality Bob Ross style yeah. to, to like paintings to, to SpongeBob, they're probably gonna pick someone that has a more cartoony style. Exactly, um, it looks like they can already match it. But um, we were talking about your own IP. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, my own IP, do that too. Yeah. Uh, you should all do that. The, the reason we wanna make your own IP is just that's where there's more money there. <laughs> there, there is more money and there's security. Cause like yes. if you have your audience and your IP and they're interested in it, then you can build something. You could tell a story, you can make a video game, you can do uh, animation, you can do all those things. You can tell sh short comics. I'm, I'm literally gonna be launching my IP into a webtoon probably in a few months. So Ooh. like there's all these things you can do by working on your IP and you can learn while you're doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Like say you, you're already working or you haven't started working. If you're working on your own IP, while still uh, uh, sitting in your portfolio, you're getting better and you're building an audience, which is always great. Nice. Yeah. Wait, James, you didn't talk about your IPs. What? Oh, well, I mean, I was, uh, it's tough because like my whole thing's an IP, yeah. my own IP. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, uh, you know, I, I started out just creating my own world and my own characters and uh, just built an audience from that. So yeah. I, um, Going back to fan art, I, I have hired people from fan art before. Yeah. You know, it's all stuff in their, their portfolio and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, I, I do want to say, like, giving, giving specifics, like, I, I, I did this for a while. If you are trying to build an audience, a great way of building an audience, of course, is fan art. It has, they've spent millions of dollars marketing it. It's just what it is. But how I, the cadence I used to do when I used to do a lot of fan art, like, a decade ago, was, like, I would do fan art fan art original. And you use those like those breaks because your, your original stuff simply is not gonna get, for the most part usually isn't gonna get as much uh, interest as the fan art. But by building an audience and having people go like, oh, we love your avatar stuff, what's this? Mm -hmm. And then they stay and then they end up reading about your characters, reading about your world you're building and they get interested. So, yeah, And that's yeah. how you just, I guess, build your own brand and IP from that. Yeah. And then slowly, eventually just stop doing fan art. Yeah, and you can just do live off your own thing. Yeah, exactly. So in conclusion, yeah. uh, your end goal shouldn't just be to work at a big studio yeah. like Cartoon Network and Disney and Nickelodeon. Because um, you'll get there. Yes, you'll you'll, you'll probably get there, guys. Like if yeah. you keep trying and you keep submitting your portfolio mm -hmm. and you, you make the right connections, you go to cons like mm -hmm. this and you make friends mm -hmm. and your friends get in and they're like, oh, we're looking for a colorist. Yeah, oh, let me recommend Stephanie. That. She could yeah. do it. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's always you know, and also big studio jobs, not the best security wise. Yeah, like, um, yeah, especially you, recently. Yeah, like, you get you get hired on per project. Yes. So um, it's a, a little shaky. Uh, yeah. But what the main goal you should take away from this panel is to find out what you get out of art, what interests you creatively, why, you, what story are you trying to tell, or what are you trying to say with your art, yeah. and then. <laughs> How can you make that into content? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it sounds weird to say like mm -hmm. content, brand, all these like words, but like that's what you, technically, regardless of if you know it, because I wouldn't say you, did you know that you were doing that when you were doing it? You were just like, no, I want to make something. Just, exactly. I was just, yeah. wanted to entertain people with my art and yeah. I just threw them up on the internet. And I think some people, uh, most of us need to be a little more um, uh, planned than, than just sure. to just randomly do it and then like get super famous off of it. Sure, sure. Because sure. it's, very rare that that happens. So you, it's good for like you to think about it and then move forward from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I just want to, YouTube doesn't check your portfolios. So no. you can just, you can make crappy yeah. art. They yeah. allow crappy art on YouTube. They do. Uh, I'm an example of that. In the beginning. <laughs> in your the stuff's true. good now. Oh, thanks to you. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, we're, we're both biased with YouTube as, as well. Just, yeah. I guess, cause that's our main source of income too. But uh, you know, there's always, there's other platforms and other avenues of, of ways you can explore. Um, what, what are you doing there? Oh, sorry, I was just looking at my notes. Um, I, I just wanted to get like specific with it too. Like YouTube um, does have the most people making uh, on the platform over 200 grand a year. And I mean, Twitter, uh, Twit, or TikTok, I think has the most uh, people getting paid for their work on it. But I think for artists, I'm always very interested in make, having them get paid for their work and making a living off of their art which is the tough part, especially nowadays. So YouTube is a great place that actually pays their artists enough to live, which I like. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can make like $1,000 on TikTok pretty easy, or $500 or something like that. But you can't, this is, that's, that's like anything. rent. I, 
how do you make money on TikTok? I don't know, dude. I don't, I'm not getting money on TikTok. I'm, I'm not either. I'm just posting my shorts on TikTok because there's, like I said, there's just more. Charles, are we making money on TikTok? <laughs> no. Well, we'll put a pin in that. <laughs> put a pin in that. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. So thanks for coming yeah, to the guys. panel, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.